How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week after a ruthless finish against the Saints, uh, a finish we did not want in the wild card round, a 21-9 loss. We are back giving our thoughts on the Bears' 8-9, and nine, technically, 2020-2021 season. Uh, our offseason coverage is going to kick off starting tomorrow, but before we got into that, we wanted to talk a little bit about what we thought happened in the 2020 season, what went wrong, what went right. So let's hop right into it. I am your host, Chris Malpe. Today, I am joined by the right of me uh, by video editor and producer, and honestly, at this point, part-time co-host on the show, Zach Rimbos below me, my two trusty co-hosts, Parth Shaw and Jayla McClinton. Guys, how's it going? Doing pretty good. Um, just, I guess, relaxing after a loss. You know, I mean, it hurt to lose yesterday. I was pissed off at one point. But, you know, as the game went on, I guess I, like, calmed my emotions. You know, I went on a little bit rants on Instagram, Twitter during the game. It was I was, it was emotional. Um, but, you know, the emotions calmed down pretty quick. And now I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think I got all over the loss pretty quickly. And in case you guys... I uh, didn't know Pars already posted on Instagram more uh, in a day than he, he posted probably in the last month. Uh, so be sure to go to Dot Bears IG. But <laughs> Jalen, how's it going, buddy? Oh, uh, same, same here. You know, I'm, I'm I'm pretty you know cool, you know, cool down, especially after this game. Um, I've got over I got over this playoff loss way faster than I did the Eagles playoff loss because I I, I really feel like coming down to the end of why we had a chance to win this game. Or not that game, not this game, because you know at the two minute warning we were, we were down uh, three to eight twenty one. So I knew you know we were gonna lose, and you know I, I came to peace with it. Um, it's definitely gonna be a very long off season. We're not gonna see play all the Bears play football until like August, uh, you know around preseason time. So I just been you know relaxed. I can't wait for the off season. Probably the best time of, uh, of you know for us that's probably the best time you know for football. So um, yeah, I, I've been pretty you know relaxed. Yeah, uh, and I think that Eagles loss hurt a lot more. Yeah, uh, I, was, I cried, bro. I didn't cry. Yeah, this one was easier to get over. I think, you know, in hindsight, you know, Bears fans thought they had an outside chance, but but they knew that if this happened that it was something that probably would happen. Uh, so, Zach, I'm going to pass it around to you. How's it going, and have you gotten over this loss? Yeah, uh, I'm mostly over it. I just I think it's a lot of the persistent problems that we saw throughout the season, which we'll get through uh, later in this, in this episode, but – I had class earlier this morning. Um, I was up pretty late last night. I couldn't sleep. I was just like feeling pretty, pretty down. Um, Cause it sucks always, you know, uh, going. I wish I could season. snare your. I wish I could share your Snapchat story on screen, but we'd probably get. <laughs> guys. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was just uh, just some jokes, but um, you know, definitely, it's just uh, you know, it sucks going. Into, going to happen this off season. There's a lot of questions, um, and that ultimately leads to. Chicago Bears, so um, I I've gotten no, and he keeps cutting out there. So I'm gonna interject now. Uh, look, we're we're here today to talk about the entire season and how it went. Sorry about that, Zach. Uh, Wi-Fi was lagging out a little bit, but we're gonna break this down into three segments because you can clearly see that that uh, the Bears' uh, season really went in three segments. So we're gonna first talk about the beginning, obviously the five and one start. Obviously, next, the six-game losing streak. And then at the end, we'll talk about uh, the resurgence they made at the end of the season and then obviously uh, the ultimate demise that happened. And we'll wrap this one off uh, by talking a little bit about what needs to happen in the future in Chicago and, and what's next for the Bears, what's next for the front office. I mean, obviously, we're going to get into our uh, – the Uncut Series is going to make a, a really nice return here in these next couple of weeks talking a lot about uh, what's next. But we'll, we'll preview a little bit about what's next for the Bears after that. So let's start with the 5-1 and one start. Obviously, guys, uh, a great start for the season for the Bears. Uh, you know, obviously, wins over Detroit, New York, Atlanta, uh, only a loss to the Colts, and then obviously the win over the Bucks and the Panthers uh, to finish off that first real third of the season, that first big chunk of the season. Uh, so, Parth, I'm going to pass it down to you now. I mean, obviously, the Bears started off the season fresh. They held the one seed in the NFC at some point before heading into L.A., and we'll get into that later. But what were your thoughts about this team heading into the the second portion of the season, do you think they set themselves up well uh, heading, heading towards the stretch? You're muted, my friend. <laughs> uh, 
you know, offensively, I thought, you know, we, there were some struggles when we were 5-1. and one, But, again, that defense was that Super Bowl-bound defense, that monster, the midway type of defense that we all expected to come and play, I mean, coming into the year. You know, they only gave up around six, 18 points per game in the first six games of the year. Um, they played really well. Um, and then, you know, they, we made the switch to quarterback. You know, we went from Mitchell Trubisky to Nick Foles uh, during the Falcons game, um, which eventually won us the game. Uh, at that time, it looked like a genius decision by Matt Nagy. Um, and then, you know, Nick Foles did – I'd say he did win a game against the Buccaneers. I think he pulled that I one out. I don't know if Trubisky wins that game. That was yeah, quite the win by exactly. Nick Foles. Definitely I'm, I'm probably that one Nick Foles, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna give credit to Nick Foles for that game. I think that was a big win, big gutsy win against Tom Brady. Um, I thought I thought we had a really good chance to make the playoffs. Um, I knew we had some offensive struggles. Um, you know, Nick Foles uh, did have his struggles even when he was starting. Um, even though early on, uh, I thought he struggled against the Panthers. I thought he even struggled against the Colts. So you know, but I expected him to even it out. Um, but again, we see that not happening. But you know, that's the second step into the season. But the Bears. Came out fresh, um, beat the opponents that they were supposed to beat, and uh, we're five and one. So, yeah, beating who you're supposed to beat is definitely something that stands out there for mm-hmm. me uh, when you're talking about that first quarter of the season. Because look, I mean, obviously the Lions, not yeah. a good season. Giants under Joe Judge, first year, almost made the playoffs, but that NFC East is not great. Colts and Buccaneers, two good teams. The Falcons, off obviously, uh, looking for a new head coach now. Uh, the Panthers not looking too great. Joe Brady's looking to get swiped uh, as a head coach. Uh, but they had their struggles, and they're going to have a top five pick in the NFL draft. Uh, but this first quarter of the season, you summed it up. Uh, there were offensive struggles. The defense was playing well. Uh, but the Bears beated the opponents they needed to beat. Jalen, I'm going to pass it to you now because I know you're going to have a strong opinion on this topic. Uh, we'll talk about Mitchell Trubisky's future uh, further on. It doesn't look too great. Uh, as Ian Rappaport reported that he was hearing uh, around House Hall that he needed to win a couple games in the playoffs to get re-signed. But talking about this first quarter of the season – or first third, you could say, it's important to bring out Mitch's benching uh, because that was something that happened against Atlanta. And even though the team uh, started off well with Nick Foles, you know, later on they could have done a little bit better maybe if Trubisky was in because we saw some pretty inferior play from Foles. So, uh, you know, that's something that stands out to me out of this first quarter of the season. So I want to ask you uh, differently. Give us your thoughts on that first part of the season. But but first and foremost, do you think Trubisky was benched too early in, in uh, week four? Week three, excuse me. Uh, I definitely feel like he was benched way too early, um, especially against the, the Falcons when the game he got benched. So, um, yeah, we were what? I don't remember the score, but I, I know we only had like 10 points. I think it was 21 point. to 3 or something. That's what we had to end up coming back from. No, we no, yeah, yeah, it was 21 to 10, and he threw a bad interception. Um, that, that got picked off, and he was able to make a tackle before he got picked six. So, uh, I don't. I don't feel like he could shoot that bitch at that point. He wasn't playing that bad. You know, he had. You know, he had a touchdown at that point. Um, after he had a forty-five yard run to get us into the red zone and do a touchdown on Jimmy Graham. I don't think he was playing that bad. The offense was was stagnant that up. In, you know, that whole three game stretch before he got this uh, originally. So, I, I really didn't really blame it on him. I, I blamed it on you know, not the you know the not having a, a run game. You know, a consistent run game at that point. Uh, we were having uh, struggles with the offensive line still. So um, I, did, I didn't think he got benched, but uh, Nick Foles was able to come in. He led us to a win um, against a terrible Falcons secondary. So I, um, I guess I was grateful for that. And then, of, of course, we played the, the uh, Colts, and they, you know, completely shut us shut us out. We only scored nine points. Um, you know, and he had a, a good win over the Bucs. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Mitch gets a win against the Bucs. The Bucs have a very good defense. Um, so who, who knows uh, if Mitchell was a starter if we win that game or not? Um, but and and then he had a win over the Panthers. I, I think I think Mitch still wins that game against the Panthers. Yeah, oh, yeah. The team. But uh, if Mitch was in that game, I don't think it, it was as close as it was. It was a one possession game. And, uh, uh, it came down to the last uh, the last drive for the Panthers before Teddy Bridgewater threw a pick, and, and that's all because uh, you know Nick Foles threw a bad interception after the Bears got a turnover um, in the red zone. So. Yeah, uh, you know, I feel like when Nick Foles, you're gonna get, um, you're gonna get games where he looks good, but at the same time, you're gonna get in the same game, he's gonna look terrible. Uh, I think he threw an interception in every game he played or every game he started for us, and uh, that that's not good at all. But you know, we were five and one after six games. People were saying we're, we're the worst five and one team of all time. We did have a we did have a very stagnant offense, but the light part said the defense was playing really good, and that's what led us to a five and one start. 
Yeah, an up and down season uh, for Falls it wasn't the greatest. You know, he was thirty second in, in passing yards. Obviously, uh, didn't play all the games of the season. Thirty first in touchdown passes, and also last in the league in quarterback rating uh, out of all eligible players. So you have to wonder early on in the season. I mean, obviously, Mitch could have won some of those games. He could have lost some of those games. Uh, but that might have been, you know. <laughs> The decision that you know the Bears could have been in a better place maybe if they kept Trubisky in. Uh, in they had some tight games against the Titans and the Saints and the Vikings, uh, and you know you have to wonder if, if we kept him in in that first quarter, the first third of the season, uh, could it have gone differently? Zach, I want to pass around to you and talk a little bit about the other side of the ball. The defense was playing very good to start the season. You know the Bears had one of the best red zone defenses. We're forcing turnovers, one of the best three and out percentages in the league. Jalen Johnson and Kyle Fuller started off the year uh, allowing some of the the best passer rating uh, to opposing quarterbacks, well, the, the worst pass rating to opposing quarterbacks in the league. They were playing lockdown defense. I want to ask you, you know, give me your thoughts, obviously, on that first third of the season. But at that point of the season when the Bears were 5-1, and one, did you think there was any indication? And, by the way, I would like to say sources are telling me that it seems like a foregone conclusion, an easy scapegoat that Chuck Pagano will, will be gone after the season. So, Zach, I want to ask you, at that point in the season, did you think there was any indication that Pagano was going to be fired? Yeah, I, I don't know about at the start of where the struggle started um, for the Bears defense, but if, if you definitely look prior to the injuries, which did plague that defense in the second half of the season with, uh, you know, Jalen Johnson was out a few weeks. And then, of course, Buster Screen was out the past three games with the concussion. Um, but, you, you know, I just I think beyond uh, even Roquan being out against the Saints, um, Chuck Pagano and his play style, uh, he doesn't know how to use the talent that he has on defense. Um, I've said it all year. I think he's neutralized Jackson and Mac. And yeah, and I think, you know, Gibson had a great game against the Saints, but regardless, uh, you know, Eddie Jackson obviously has not been what he had, what he was in 2018. He has not lived up to it. He had a decent year last year um, with Aha Clinton Dix next to him. Um, but that defense, you know, was, was way better throughout the entire season. It was consistent. The offense was the main problem last season. Um, and now it's kind of like we're in a lingo. I feel like part of the reason that the defense regressed, regressed excuse me, is that I feel that the culture of the team right now is not in a good place. I think, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, we talked about it right before this. Uh, Mike Furry said it might be the worst wide receiver core that he's ever been a part of on yeah, the team. Yeah, Allen um, Robinson saying the Bears had 365 days to get a deal done and didn't. Uh, really, I mean, I think I think you have a good point that Matt Nagy might have lost the locker room uh, after that six-game losing streak. And even though they ended up winning, you know, maybe the team didn't feel that they deserved to be in the playoffs at eight and eight. I feel like it just has to be a lack of commitment for a lot of the players. I think, and I think that starts with coaching. I think Chuck Pagano, um, again, lost lost lead of his defensive players, which also is Matt Nagy's part. Um, but you know, I just think overall the team. Uh, had a mentality that was, you know, they don't have a championship mentality, and I think that's part of the problem. But the defense regressed severely, and that's where the, the source of the problem started for the second half of the season for the Bears. Yeah, and that defense was strong those first six weeks, but then as we get into our next segment, it, you know, it, it went downhill. Uh, you know, the Bears obviously went, I believe, in week seven to face the Rams on Monday Night Football, got absolutely shut out, uh, it, following by losses to the Saints, one that they probably could have won. Uh, Foles had a chance to lead him down the field at the end, got to, you know, around Saints territory, ended up having to punt, and then Will Lutz ended it off. Um, and then the Titans, Vikings, and the Packers before the Bears won again uh, a couple of weeks later, and the Lions, excuse me, uh, before the Bears ended up winning again, not until December against the Texans. So we look at that, you know, a stretch from about mid-October uh, to mid-December where the Bears didn't win a game. So, Parth, I want to circle it back around to you. Give me your thoughts on, you know, that that second part of the season, that six-game losing streak. Uh, and do you think, you know, I, I feel like even if the Bears won one or two more of those games, they could have been in a lot better position here. So what do you think went wrong in, in that six-game stretch? Matt Nagy, um, you know, he lost that locker room, like you guys said. Um, the team didn't trust him, especially after benching Trubisky. Uh, it looked like a good move at the time, uh, but, you know, the six-game losing streak proves otherwise. You know, the offensive line was struggling. Um, you know, the Bears had Richard Coward in there. Guys like Alex Bars were still not playing. Sam Mustafer wasn't still in there. So the offensive line was still struggling. They decided to keep that offensive line intact and not, you know, move on to this, 
guys behind them who could have tried and even played like better. Like Mustafer and guys that we see playing now. Much better. And if they played that earlier, I think Nick Foles would have looked a lot better in that offensive line in that system. But again, the Bears did not do that. Um, they struggled. Uh, Nick Foles was a statue in the pocket. Uh, and with that offensive line, things got bad. The Bears couldn't put up points. Um, basically, the worst offense in the league behind the Jets. Um, you know, the Jets were the worst team. I mean, I guess the second worst team in the NFL, but the worst offense in the NFL. And the Bears were quite 31st in the NFL at everything, too, until that three-game streak, four-game streak that Mitch Trubisky came in and made the offense look better. But until then, the offense was terrible. The defense started going on a decline. Um, you know, the guys started playing a lot less harder. I guess they gave up a little bit, um, and things just got bad. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. There wasn't, there isn't much to say, um, especially losing those close ones to the Saints. I think that, that game really hurt the Bears mentally. And, it definitely and the Vikings as well, because you, you came out game. half with the lead and just absolutely blew it. Yeah, those, the, losing those close ones definitely hurt the team and took a mental toll as they were losing more and more games. And, you know, six-game losing streak definitely cannot happen again. And, you know, usually coaches are fired if something like that happens. And, and we'll see what happens in the future of Matt Nagy in Chicago. We just saw Doug Peterson get fired by the Philadelphia Eagles, and he won a darn Super Bowl uh, three or four years ago. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we'll see if the McCaskies hold their team to as high of standards. Uh, it, it should be interesting. We're going to talk about that later this week. But, Jalen, obviously, you know, that middle stretch of the season, we saw the demise of Nick Foles. We started seeing some sloppy play. And when Mitch came back in against Green Bay, uh, we saw a little bit of rust from him. The offense looked better. But, uh, you, you know, it obviously wasn't enough, and Aaron Rodgers is a different beast, and we respect him here, and, and we always will, even though he seems to be the demise of us every year. I want to ask you, Jalen, I mean, obviously we saw Mitch lose to the Packers and then a bad one against the Lions. I want to give you another QB-oriented question. Uh, so do you think Mitch should have been brought back earlier, and at what point do you think the lease should have been caught on Foles and, and, and Mitch should have been brought back in? Uh, so my question is yes. Mitch definitely should have been brought back before the we were on a four game losing streak when Mitch came back. So I, I, I would say before after the Rams game because Nick Foles did not play good in that game. Yeah, I know he was getting pressured a lot, but even when he even when he wasn't like um, multiple shots at deep shots for Mooney that could have been that, that were like overthrow cakewalk touchdowns. Yeah, exactly. So um, it was a couple throws he missed to Mooney in general. I know he missed. I know he missed one in the Colts game. He missed one in the Buccaneers game. Um, he was missing a couple toes in the Panthers game. In the Rams game, he missed two. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he was, he was, he Nick Foles was supposed to come in, come in and make this offense look um, fluid. And was highly he toted was, for being able yeah. to make those deep throws at a better rate than yeah, Mitch. He, he, was, well. he was supposed to be. He was supposed to be a more, a, a, a more accurate, you know, thrower when it, when it comes to down the field than Mitch was, and that, and that wasn't true at all. So I definitely feel like after the Rams game, where we shut out on offense, um, I think we were. No, we had three points, but, uh, but the only points in that game. Yeah, the only touchdown came from the defense uh, on, on the fourth. Eddie Jackson, that, yeah, that, that he would, that Eddie Jackson recovered. So we got we got shut out for from a touchdown, um, in that Rams game. And yes, the Rams have a very good defense, but we were in the red zone a, a couple times, um, and, and we didn't we didn't execute. Um, I know we, we got stopped one time on, on fourth and goal. um, and, and didn't get no points at all. So I, I definitely think after that Rams game, Mitch should have been brought back in, but um. You know, yeah. it, it is what it is. We, we, you know, we still made the playoffs, but I definitely feel like we would be in a, a better position yeah. right now if we were if Nick Foles didn't didn't, didn't start them, uh, didn't go on a four game losing streak before Mitch came back in. Yeah, and you know, it's it's so many ifs, ands, and buts if Trubisky came back in, but at some point the play from Foles got too bad, and I think Bears fans realized that whatever quarterback they shifted to, it wasn't going to be great. I, I, before, before you talk, I don't even know if, if Nick Foles didn't get hurt. Who knows? He might still be. Still yeah, hurt. oh, yeah, absolutely. I think he was benched because he got hurt, because he couldn't play against Green Bay, and then Trubisky played well enough, and Nagy was sort of like, well, F it. You know, it, it doesn't matter who we go with at this point. Uh, so, you know, the middle of the season got quite ugly for Nick Foles. Zach, I'm going to keep it on a defensive question for you. Uh, obviously, we saw the defense drop off. Uh, during the middle of the season, a lot of 24 to the Rams, 26 to the Saints, 24 for the Titans, uh, 41 to the Packers, 34 to the Lions, and then also 19 to the Vikings, and that wasn't even enough offensively for us to be able to win that. And you talked about during that first stretch of the season, allowing only about 18 points per game to opposing teams. So I want to ask you, uh, you know, give me your thoughts on what went wrong defensively during that middle portion of the season. 
Uh, like I was saying just before all the injuries and, and stuff, it just it was the the whole season. It was the Ben don't break mentality. It was the let them get down the field on you, and then we are the best red zone. And then I mean, you can't keep up with that whole season. You have to the be- pass rush this entire season. I think was very suspect. I mean, it did it was- come out later in the year that Robert Quinn was dealing with some turf toe, which did make sense, but. The pass rush wasn't able to get there all year. It was very underwhelming, and it, it sucks seeing uh, you know Leonard Floyd go to the Rams and be able to do what he was did this Ten year, sacks. which is more than Mac this season. Um, but you know, I, I just I, it's, I think that also relies and comes down to Chuck Pagano's defense. Man, I just I, with Fangio, you could tell all this talent on the team. He correctly knew how to use it, and uh, I think it's the problem with Pagano is that. Um, even with Robert Quinn underproducing, you know Khalil is not used to his full potential. Obviously, he's he's the when you are are scheming against the Bears, you want to shut him down at all costs. Um, so obviously that's a game plan. But again, I just I think most of the the problem is that it was that Ben don't break mentality, and you can't stick with that for the entire season. If you want to be a great defense in this league, uh, you can't let them run you down. Yeah. You'll get tired, uh, especially when the offense isn't producing like ours wasn't. Uh, the defense gets tired. It's on the field most of the time, and it's getting ran up on until the end zone, and then they finally shut them down or force a field goal. Um, and you can't stay with that the whole season, and you saw that, and that's when it started dropping off. Yeah, I think in the middle of the season, too, is when the Bears started giving up more explosive runs, and you could see that they were missing Eddie Goldman. Uh, I think through this later portion, and we'll talk about it later, we saw a big resurgence of Blaw Nichols, and I'm sure Zach will mention that. And I'm confident in Nichols moving forward because, frankly, I, I'm going to say right now, I think Nicky Mix is not a bear uh, past this season, whether or not that's a hot take. Um, but we saw them getting gouged in the run game. It opened up the pass game for opposing teams. Uh, and Jalen Johnson struggled a little bit uh, throughout this stretch. I think it's a really good rookie year for him still. Uh, one of the top players in the league with, with pass breakups. Still hasn't gotten that first career interception. Uh, but injuries started to struggle us, and – as we face better QBs down the stretch, it, you know, Zach mentioned it, you really realize that Chuck Pagano cannot scheme, especially in zone, especially on big downs. I feel like throughout the year, uh, you know, it, it, it seems like, especially through that stretch, uh, third down seemed like a given. And it, and it seemed like a given yesterday against the Saints, no matter how long it was. If it was third and four, third and 11, third and 15, uh, it, it seemed pretty easy for opposing teams, especially good quarterbacks like Ryan Tannehill, Jared Goff, uh, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Matthew Stafford, uh, as well as Kirk Cousins, who's played some decent ball this year, even though the Vikings didn't end up having a great season. So that's worth noting. Uh, and then it's interesting that you bring up Mac as well, because I noticed that as well. I think the only two games I could point out that he had big performances in this season, people can correct me if they want, uh, was the Buccaneers, where he absolutely was a showstopper. And then against the Vikings, when he had a big pick against Kirk Cousins, also forced a fumble, I believe, in that game uh, in the first quarter. So uh, you know, it wasn't the greatest year for Mac, and he definitely slumped in the middle of the season. But I'm still confident that he can be a, a great player moving forward. And Robert Quinn was non-existent throughout the year. My God, uh, that signing has been quite the disappointment and has lingered throughout the season. You know, he made one or two big plays throughout the season and was decent with getting pressure throughout the season. But we expected way better sack numbers from him and weren't able to see it. And in, in this middle stretch, it was looming because on a lot of these quarterbacks, you had to get pressure and Quinn had one-on-ones all the time and couldn't get home. So let's head into the last stretch of the season. Uh, when the Bears finally won games again, uh, obviously it started, I believe, a couple of weeks ago against the Houston Texans and a thumping win 36-7 to and then a great win in Minneapolis to keep the playoff hopes alive. The Bears did what they needed to do against the Jaguars and then got some help getting in against – uh, you know, the, the Packers w- with the Arizona loss and then obviously with how it came to the end against the Saints. So Parth, I'm going to wrap it back around to you, keep it kind of on the same notes. Uh, you know, taking a look at how this season closed off, uh, I believe the Bears in their last five games were three and two. So what did you think about the end of the season? And just give us your thoughts about how it wrapped up. I mean, obviously not the end you would hope, but kind of yeah. with how that six game losing streak ended, uh, the end you would somewhat expect. It was kind of like the beginning of the season. It was beat the teams you're supposed to beat, and they basically got the Bears into the playoffs. It was kind of a mixture of the two because it was like yeah. the Bears struggling against good teams but beating the teams they were able to beat. It kind of showed you that the Bears were a middle-of-the-road team but probably didn't deserve to be in the playoffs in my opinion. Yeah, uh, we got in because they added the extra seed. But again, like Chris said, we were the middle-of-the-road team. Um, we beat the Texans. Uh, I thought that was a big game. You know, Mitch Trubisky played really well that game. Uh, he 
outdueled, I guess, Deshaun Watson. That was the narrative all week or all all year, I guess, coming into the season. And then we the we beat the Vikings, which is a really impressive win, in my opinion. Uh, probably one of my favorite games all year. I thought the, our offense played amazing all game. We were able to drive down the field, match Minnesota all game, which is amazing. I guess that, that game, I guess, would determine if the Bears could get into the playoffs or not. If we lost that one, I guess Minnesota could have got in. But since we won, we got in. And then the Jaguars is a beat down. And then Green Bay and New Orleans, we saw the Bears could not compete with the top team in the league. And Mitch Trubisky still struggles against the best of the league. So, yeah. Yeah, it's good that you mentioned Mitch because he struggled against uh, good teams in the past and definitely struggled against New Orleans and Green Bay at the end. You know, the Bears played up to the level they needed to play, but weren't able to pull off a Tampa Bay like upset against the one or two seeds in the NFC now uh, with Green Bay or New Orleans, the teams that are favored to end up meeting in the NFC Championship. So, Jalen, I'm going to pass it back around to you with another quarterback question. I want to ask you, what do you think about Trubisky's play down the stretch? Because we saw a really good stretch there with Houston, Minnesota as well as the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, he didn't have much involvement against the Green Bay Packers because the Bears were handing it off a lot, and David Montgomery really ended up uh, being more of the focal point uh, as the season wrapped up. And then we saw him struggle, I mean, not struggle against New Orleans, but uh, he wasn't able to make enough plays to win. So I want to I ask, what were your thoughts on him being brought back in and kind of getting his feet wet once again? And then I, I want to ask you, and you just need to give me a one-word answer on this because I know you could go on all day about this. Uh, do you think Trubisky should be re-signed? Do I think he should? Yes. But do I think we do? No. Um, uh, okay, so his resurgence, like well, when we brought him back, it, it, you know, we saw very good QB play from him. He looked, he looked way better than he did the, at the beginning of the season when we were scoring like 20 points and still winning games. You know, we were seeing us put up 30, uh, what, four times, three times in a row, four times? I think it was, yeah, it was, it was uh, four times in a row. Uh, I know, I, I totally forgot we lost the Lions game. Uh, but, you know he was he was looking very good. I know we were still trying to. I know we were still running a, a type of deep and dunk offense where we don't let him throw the ball deep, but we you know we put him out on uh, you know play action rollouts, and he would you know work like that down the field, and that, that was working. Um, you know obviously we won three games like that. I mean, we we have a playoff we had a playoff position because of that, but um the, the last two games the the Rams and not the Rams the Packers and the Saints game I definitely feel like that that our coaching, our offensive coaching staff did not give him a chance to succeed. Uh, you know, last week, like you said, we were, we were giving the ball to David Montgomery. He was the main focal point of the offense. And the only real time he was able to throw it deep, it was a, a, an amazing dot to, to Darnell Mooney, which he ended up catching, and we, we got a field goal out of it. But, and then, you know, yesterday we, we seen him throw the ball, like, what, three times? Uh, one, was, one was caught by uh, to, to Javon. The other was dropped, which should have been a touchdown. I was also on the Which absolutely field. shifted the momentum of the game. Definitely. Agree that. Then, uh, the other one was to Javon, which it was a great ball. It was accurate. It was just a great play. It was a, just a great play by Marshawn Lattimore. So those were the only real times that I can think of off the top of my head where he was allowed to throw the ball deep when the game mattered. And other than that, we were dinking, dunking. We were giving the ball to Ryan all on third and two for whatever. <clears throat> um, and we were still down four points or still down one, uh, two possessions. So I, I definitely feel like that Matt Nagy or whoever was calling plays yesterday. I think I saw some Nagy plays. I definitely, I definitely saw some Nagy plays yesterday. And, and I, I guess Matt, the Blazers still, you know, the play caller uh, by, by uh, you know, because they said they switched. So whoever was was calling plays yesterday, I didn't think, I don't feel like they gave them Mitch a chance to, to succeed. And that's mainly probably because we're playing a, a good team. When we play bad teams, they give him a chance in any 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 uh any excels. But you know, both both times, you know, the last two weeks where where we play a good team, he just, he's not given an opportunity to, to to throw the ball down the field, and that's you know resulted in losses. So um, that's this is how I feel in the situation. And it's interesting that you bring up play calling because you know it, it seems like it would be so Matt Nagy to take back play calling in the last game, and yeah, we never knew who yeah. ended up calling plays yesterday, but. You know, I, I like that you mentioned the play calling, though, because we saw Bill Lazor get his feet wet more with Trubisky as well as David Montgomery. Uh, mm -hmm. We saw the team become more two-dimensional, uh, especially against the Texans again, uh, against the Vikings and the Jaguars, and even against Green Bay. You know, the run game was working very well uh, throughout that game all the way to the end. Uh, so, Zach, I, I, I'm going to ask you a two-prong question. I know you had a little bit more to say about the offense, uh, so I'm going to let you do that first, and then I'm going to ask you one more question before we finish this one off. So pipe in, say what you had to say about the offense. 
I just want to say, add into what Jalen was talking about with opportunity. I, I find it very odd, and, and the fact that you said maybe Matt Nagy did take back play calling for that game. Um, I, I think we all know that Matt Nagy has a pretty big ego. Um, he tends to want to be able to drive this team, and he wants to be the controller of this team. Uh, and oftentimes, he doesn't have the personnel to do so, or the right, uh, you know, the players aren't in the right mindset to even do so, um, or have the skills for it. I, I think that you know when we saw deep shots from Mitch. Uh, they were accurate, and that's all you asked them to do is be accurate. And then after playoffs, you're supposed to be giving up anything you hit. The entire playbook that you have, you're supposed to be opening uh, no matter what. You should be doing everything and anything you can do in the playoffs. Um, and they limited Mitchell Trubisky to being able to throw the ball down the field. And I, I found that that was very odd considering he had made those throws down the field that you asked him to make. Um you know, one, I mean, one of the other balls that he had was, was a good play, like Jalen was saying, to Javon Wims again, and then obviously the dropped um, touchdown. But it, I, I find it very odd that he was limited to his play. Um, and a game that was especially playing for his contract, too, um, is something definitely to look at. Yeah, and Zach, I'm going to come right back to you now because obviously – this last portion of the season, we really saw the demise of the defense uh, and saw them start playing really poorly. I mean, even against Minnesota, uh, you know, it was a pretty poor game defensively. And, you know, we did see injuries. You know, we saw Roquan go down in this huge game against the Saints. We saw Jalen Johnson out for basically the last third of the year as well as Buster Screen, who was knocked into concussion protocol, but I'm pretty sure he was just told, you're, you're not coming back. Uh, so I want to ask you, Zach, what went wrong with this defense throughout this last stretch, you know? And you mentioned it in the last portion where we talked about defense. I think the last two-thirds of the season, we saw the defense steadily decrease. Uh, we saw some players step up still, but some players definitely decreased. And I want to ask you, you know, I just asked Jalen uh, whether or not Mitch should be brought back. And I want to know, what do you think? Should Chuck Pagano be brought back? Oh, absolutely not. Chuck Pagano should be 100% out no matter what. Um, you know, I, I'm so, it sucks – for him, you know, obviously he came from Indianapolis. He, I liked him as a head coach at Indy, um, but it's just a different scenario, and he, he did not do well for us, um, you know, at defensive coordinator, and I think that the talent on this team, like I said, uh, the fact that he's not able to use it, um, the fact that it dropped off so bad in the middle of the season, uh, you know, they gave up games like Detroit where Detroit had 450-plus total yards on us um, in a game that – That might have been Matthew Stafford alone. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. I, I don't remember the stats specifically, but I know Matthew Stafford had over 400. I think he had over 400, so. Which is ridiculous. That should never have happened. Uh, and, you know, especially when you have the lead um, and the Bears offense kind of kind of let it happen in the fourth quarter. They didn't put up with it. I mean, but you couldn't even blame that game on the offense, to be honest. Um, regardless, I, I just think, you know, the, that's it's what I was saying earlier. I think that the problem with this team right now is the mentality. I think a lot of the players gave up halfway through the season – they went on that six-game losing streak, and I think a lot of them lost that motivation, that fire to want to be able to compete. Um, you know, that's a championship mentality problem. I think you know, Mitch is one of the, in my opinion, Mitch is one of the only players on this team, along with Mac and Robinson, probably uh, Akeem Hicks, Roquan, who have that championship mentality. They want to go beyond their measures. Um, you know, I, I think that a lot of the other players are limited. They're just there to be there, and I think that's a problem with this team. Yeah, I mean, we talked about Robert Quinn earlier and a lot of players getting content, and that six-game losing streak definitely hurts. And at some point I would understand why players would want to go, but that's basically our recap of the whole year, and we can talk more specifically about each game uh, in a breakdown if you guys want that. But before we win this one off, I want to play a little game. It's called Stay or Go. For those of you watching on YouTube right now, you'll be able to see how it works on the screen. Yeah, this is interesting. For those of you who are – watching uh, or listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, I'll explain how it works. I've got uh, five names, six names on the screen right now. We're going to each go through and talk about whether or not they should stay or go. Uh, it just has to be a one-word answer. Uh, we're not going to get into depth on it because we're going to make videos on it in the future, but probably all these guys, if they don't get fired before we get the chance to make a video on it. We're going from bottom uh, brass to top brass. So we're going to start with Mitchell Trubisky, Chuck Pagano, Bill Lazor, Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace, and then Ted Phillips at the top. So let's quickly go around. All you guys got to do is give me uh, just a one-word answer and then maybe a, a sense of an explanation. So, Parth, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Trubisky Nation for years, but you posted on Instagram uh, yesterday after the loss uh, that it, it, Trubisky was done in Chicago. So stay or go, Mitchell Trubisky, what do you think? It's time to go. Um, you know, it sucks, but I think the chapter's got to end, um, and it better end now. I think it's it's. It, I think it should have ended last year, but it's better now than – afterwards 
Jalen, you've been wanting to back Trubisky forever, uh, but we're talking realistically here. So, so for Mitchell Trubisky, is it time to stay or go? Realistically, uh, it, it's time to go, and it hurts me saying that, especially after his uh, press conference. I think that was you've today. backed him all year, man. Where he was like, "I want to be a Chicago Bear. I feel like I finally found a home, and we're not going to resign him." That hurts me to say, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's going to be a go for for, for Trubisky. <laughs> Yeah, I posted on Instagram yesterday, but by uh, with a picture of Trubisky because I thought that it was his last drive as a bear, and I'm going to maintain that. You know, Ian Rappaport said that he needed uh, multiple playoff wins, that the McCaskies had high standards if he wanted to stay in Chicago. So I think it's pretty obvious for me it's time to go for Trubisky. But, Zach, are we in consensus here? Uh, stay or go for Mitchell Trubisky? Yeah, he needs to change the scenery. Um, and, you know, I think he's a great player that is inspi- inspirational to a lot of uh, you know viewers and uh, fans of the team because of his mentality, like I was saying. But he definitely needs to change the scenery. Um, and you know, I think he deserves a lot better, to be honest. Yeah, uh, we can go back and forth all day about the Bears and, and and how, especially these two guys on the screen, as you can see, for those of you watching on YouTube, uh, two of the last three guys may have screwed him up. Uh, and we'll get onto that later because uh, their futures are definitely up uh, for grabs as well. Uh, for this next one, I mean, I think we can all say our answers at once because there's not really much needing to go into it. Chuck Pagano, stay or go. Ready, three, two, one, go. Get him out of here. He can go. Bye. All right. <laughs> Next up, we've got Bill Lazor. This is an interesting one because I would say as his tenure as calling plays, I think was more positive than negative. Uh, I think offensively we saw a little bit of a resurgence under him uh, as the season continued. So, Parth, I'm going to start with you. Bill Lazor, stay or go in Chicago next year? Um, So this answer, I guess, would feed off of my head coach answer, um, and it would be up to whatever that new head coach would want to do with Bill Lazor. So So for now, stay. Yeah. All right, Jalen, uh, and I think that's a pretty pretty good answer. I'm going to agree with you, Parth. I'm going to say stay for him, uh, you know, and obviously that shows what me and Parth think is going to happen at the GM position. But I think whoever may be next to GM is going to be able to decide what happens to his coaching staff. So I'm going to say stay right now for Bill Lazor, but that one's to be determined. I'm going to say TBD on that one. Uh, Jalen, you agree with us there? Uh, yeah, when you say he, he needs to stay? Or yeah, or do you think he'll uh, stay in – what do you think? Uh, think I'm, not, I'm not going to talk about who I, what I think about, you know, Nagy Pace and Phillips until we get there, but I definitely feel like he needs to stay. Um, well, I was kind of iffy on bringing him in because he really didn't do nothing with the Dolphins and with the Bengals when he was the offensive coordinator. Well, he, he, he was, like, decent. He was here. solid with Miami. Yeah, solid, but, like, he wasn't top 10. And like, I would like, say he was solid here as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was definitely solid. So I didn't have high expectations to come, for him coming to the season. I didn't think he was going to end up calling plays. But uh, I didn't feel like he needs to stay. Uh, he was able to to use Mitch to his uh, to his strengths, and he turned David into a one thousand yard runner on the last month of the season. So I definitely feel like he can beat him. Zach, do we have a consensus here? Bill Lazor, stay or go? Yeah, I, I mean, like part of the thing, it's definitely independent. But the way he changed the offense, despite how you know historically poor it was at the beginning of the season, I think it's definitely something that is worth noting. But yeah, I'd say stay for now. Yeah. Uh, Let's move on to Matt Nagy now. This is probably the most intriguing one. I'm going to start by saying I think go, but realistically, I think he stays. Uh, You take a look at his record. He's made the playoffs two out of three years. He's here. He has a winning record uh, above 500. It's tough to get rid of someone like that. But I'm going to say go because look at what the Eagles just did with Doug Peterson, a 2017 Super Bowl champion coach uh, who hasn't lived up to standards recently. And the fact that you get to the playoffs two of three years and aren't able to win one game, uh, and, and still had inferior play, I would say, throughout 2020. Uh, I think Matt Nagy needs to go, but realistically, I think he stays. But once again, uh, we'll get on to Ryan Pace, but I think it's going to be up to a new GM, uh, the future and the fate of Matt Nagy. So, Parth, I'm going to pass it around to you. Stay or go, Matt Nagy? This should be an interesting one. I'm going to say go. Um, one question I'd ask Matt Nagy is, can you beat the Green Bay Packers? And he can't. Um, and for that reason, I feel like he needs Or to any beat. team that, that made the playoffs this year. I think the only team that made the playoffs this year that the Bears beat was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Lost to Green Bay twice, lost to Tennessee, lost to uh, New Orleans, uh, and lost to Indianapolis. So. And, the, yeah. and, the Rams, so, and the Rams. And the Rams, and the Rams. Yeah. yeah. So the Bears definitely cannot beat teams over 500. And I think that for that reason, I think he deserves to leave. Um, you know, he hasn't done much, even that 12-4 and four season. Uh, it was... You know, kind of spoon-fed five big fan deals defense. You know, that defense was outstanding that year, and it really helped um, that record to be 12-4. and four. Last year was an 8-8 eight and eight year, but with a bunch of ups and downs, same 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 situation this year. And, you know, he was a lot to, you know, bring in Nick Foles. Uh, you know, he said things would get better. Things never did. 
and for that reason, I think it's time for Matt Nagy to go. And we're going to make a big video on Matt Nagy, uh, and I, I, I'm excited to make that video. You know, I don't. I I really lost respect for Matt Nagy after benching Mitchell Trubisky and a lot of other reasons. But I think uh, the Bears, if they want to, you know, be aggressive and sh- tell show that we aren't okay with just getting into the playoffs, you got to fire Matt Nagy. If the McCaskies want to show that that they're not content with what's happening, yeah. I'm hoping that they're turning the corner uh, and realizing that. And by the way, I don't think we'll see any fire eggs or anything for about a week. We saw it take a week for the Eagles, and it takes a little bit for these teams to talk things out. But there were reports this morning by numerous sources that there's deep discussions right now at Hallis Hall about the future. So I definitely think some changes will be made. But I got to agree with you. I think uh, if the McCaskies want to show that they're uh, about winning and don't want to stick in this spot of, of just being an average team or below average team, uh, I think Matt Nagy needs to go. So, Jalen, I'm going to pass it around to you. What do you think about Matt Nagy? Stay or go? Um, so I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be uh, the lone wolf here. But so I'm, I'm going to say – he needs to stay, but also something of him needs to go. I, I feel like he can't take play calling back. Yes, that, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I know, I know, Mad Nagy is a terrible offensive coordinator. Um, he's a terrible play caller, but he's a good coach. Um, you know, he brought you know last obviously last season we didn't make the playoffs, but we were on a four game losing streak, and at week sixteen we were still in a position to make the playoffs. He's been able to bring this team back to. Uh, or back to life. Know. He's good at motive. Yeah. I agree. He's yeah. good. For yeah, that's what I'm saying. Saying. He might have lost it this year, if I'm being frank and honest. And Zach mentioned he, that earlier. He, he's he's brought he's brought this back twice. Uh, brought this team back twice after going on long, long losing streaks. Back into this season. Obviously, we made the playoffs last season, close to making the playoffs. But when it comes to this play calling, he I, I definitely feel like he cannot call plays next season. Whoever the quarterback is. Um, who, whoever the GM is, um, he, he cannot he cannot be allowed to, to make to call plays, and if if he does call plays next season, then he he, he, he needs to go. This is my last season with, with Matt Nagy. You know, he's been eighteen. What I think he's eighteen and seventeen, or or something like that. Um, uh, I mean, excluding last season. I mean, uh, the every yeah. since the fourth season, he's been like eighteen and seventeen or sixteen and seventeen. I'm excuse me, counting this playoff game. And that's not a good record um, in the last two seasons, especially because you know Lovey Smith got fired after he went ten and six. So um, you know this, this is—I I feel like he needs to stay, but he cannot call plays next year. And if he does, then he needs to be fired, um, especially if we don't have a huge losing streak next season. Yeah, Zach, I'm going to pass it around to you now. Uh, this is quite the discrepancy, and I'm sure we're going to make a lot of videos on it in the future. But what are your thoughts on Matt Nagy? Stay or go? Go. I, I'm at. I've had enough of them. I, I think that just from game planning to motivation uh, of your players to having control of your players has been completely lost this season. I mean, if you look at game planning alone, uh, you know, going into these games, we face good teams, like Parth was saying, like you were saying, uh, when we face good teams, we absolutely get shut out uh, and it's ridiculous. I feel like the game plan, game planning for these games uh, is very poor and, and not to say, uh, you know, they went over supposedly in practice uh, and, and in film, uh, about uh, CJ or Garner Johnson, whatever his name is. Um, One disciplined times. team, and that starts from the top with Matt Nagy. Multiple times, and there were still problems. Obviously, Anthony Miller got ejected. Uh, you know, but like the opportunity. I'm sure, we'll be making there. a stay or go about Anthony Miller and Javon Williams very soon, and that'll get everyone fired up. Regardless, regardless, you have to look at this season. We went eight and eight. If they don't expand the playoffs, we're not in the playoffs, and that's two seasons in a row that we go eight and eight. Um, he hasn't developed anybody past their potential. Nobody has stuck out. Nobody's developed. I think I could argue two players, actually. I think I could argue two Arnold players. Mooney, could maybe. Argue James Daniels and David Montgomery. That's probably the only two I could think of. Which excelled under Bill Lazor's offense as well. Yeah. Well, well, especially David Montgomery. But either way, regardless, I, I just think his development of players, he didn't help Trubisky enough. He benched him two times. Uh, and can, I mean, you can only t- ask uh, what that could do for some, a player's mentality. Uh, in confidence. So I, in my opinion, he's got to go. I, I've had enough of it. Um, I think that he's got too much ego for this team. I think he's a good offensive coordinator uh, in the right mindset or in the right uh, in the right place. Um, but I, I think, you know, he's got the motivation, I guess. He's, he's not a bad person. I just don't think he fits here. I really don't. All right. Uh, and it's crazy because I feel like some of these guys on the list could be at, uh, back as easily as they could be gone. It's really going to start from the top of the McCaskies. Uh, let's let's try and speed this up a little bit, though. I think it's more consensus on pace because 
He's overcommitted to the defense. He hasn't helped Trubisky with the offensive line. Uh, he hasn't re-signed Allen Robinson at this point or franchise tagged him. So I'm just going to say let's do this as a consensus. I'm pretty confident on what you guys are all going to say. Uh, so we'll let anyone explain if they say yes, but let's do this. Ryan Page, stay or go? Three, two, one, go. 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 Stay. Okay, go for it, yeah, Jalen. Uh, so I know this is once again going to be like um, I guess yeah I, I take technically this is a hot take especially because everybody else said Co. Uh, th- his draft class this year um, contributed to to us winning games. You know Darnell Mooney was our second best wide receiver. Jalen Johnson was our second best corner. If we see how bad or how bad him being out impacted the team or the defense. Um, you know, respectively. And then last last year, uh, he drafted David Montgomery. He's one of our second best players on offense. He's been a real hit or miss in the draft. I think he's been a real hit or miss. Yeah. He's, I feel like he's getting better. This last draft class, especially he's with all the, at finding offensive talent, um, with, especially how, lim- how how limited his draft picks were. We, we didn't have a first round pick this year. Yeah, like two steps yeah. in, in, in the second uh, round. Yeah, but. See, he's had three chances. To Kevin White, one. Mitchell Trubisky. We'll get into it later. We'll get into it later. I should have a video on pace in the future. Uh, but you know, it, it's interesting. It, it, it's it's a tough call with him. I just feel like he hasn't done enough to yeah. to provide the offense. Also, the draft misses uh, and overcommitting to the defense. I, I feel, uh, this is one of the main reasons I say yes is because without without him building his defense, we, we don't make the playoffs the last three seasons. Yeah, or, great. Two, two of the last three seasons. Um, he's brought in talent, you know. He's brought in Allen Robinson, who uh, hopefully, hopefully, we can he, we can get him, you know, under contract for the next three years. But I don't know how that's gonna go. I don't think Pace just lets him walk. Pace is usually a, a good a good guy or like good with with good negotiator. Yeah, with, with retaining the guys yeah. that need to stay. We have seen him do it with Kyle. Uh, we've seen him do it with Keem. You know, obviously he's more uh, people. To, that, that, those are just the ones I can think of off the top of my head, but. Um, and then with the drafts, you know, not every, not every, it's every, every GM's not going to have a, a good draft every single year. It's going to be some players you thought that were good that, that just didn't turn out because one, they, they didn't have the right mentality for the NFL or they, you know, they, you just, you missed, uh, you just you know, misinterpreted how they were as, as a player. Um, so I'm, I'm not mad that he missed on, I know he missed, he missed on a lot of guys more than he hit on a lot of guys, especially with our first round picks, Kevin White, of course, Mitchell Trubisky, uh, is like a 50 50. He led us to the playoffs twice, but um, you know, he's obviously not going to be here next year. Leonard Floyd, even though he's a good player with the Rams, he, he really didn't do much with us. But you, you've seen the talent, um, in Roquan Smith, who probably his best first round pick he's had, um, since, since he's been our GM. And but he's found, also found a lot of guys in the mid rounds. Uh, yeah. Eddie Jackson, I know a lot of you know, Bears fans are mad about him right now, but he's a two time pro bowler, once I'm all pro. Found Tariq Cohen, he's an all pro. Uh, David Montgomery, Roquan Smith, stuff like that. So yeah, a, a lot of guys in the mid rounds that that contributed to this team um, since since he's been a GM. So that's that's why I say yes. But I definitely think he has a short lease next year, um, especially because he felt he missed on the quarterback. And when you're a GM, you cannot miss on the quarterback, especially when you trade up for it. So uh, if if you draft another quarterback this year, and you know we we, I I, I don't depend on the quarterback to lead us to a good season next year. I definitely feel like we, we bring in try to bring in another veteran. And have that quarterback sit behind, sit behind them because this is probably Maddie and Pace last year. If if they stay, you you don't get a year after this if you fail. So uh, yeah. I, I said yes, but I'll only give them one more season after that. Uh, if if we don't if we don't exceed or if we don't reach expectations, then I definitely feel like he, he's let go. Yeah, and then we've got you know, and, and Jalen predicts Nagy and Pace will stay, and that that is a hot take with what's been happening recently, but. Let's move on to Ted Phillips, the head of football office in Chicago. I think this is a pretty obvious one. There was reports in the middle of the season that he's basically been forced to retire. Maybe he chose to, but it seems like they were going to fire him if he didn't retire. So we'll see if that ends up happening or not. Uh, I'm going to say no, boys. Is that consensus? Yeah, he can go as well. Yeah, he can go. I, I've, seen, I've seen people say, like, you know, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, like promote. Like pace to, to president. No thanks. I don't think pace needs any more power. <laughs> and then have him bring in, have him bring him in the GMC. I wouldn't like. I wouldn't be opposed to that. But at the same time, but it, that would mean pace would probably get less control. We're rambling on way too much, Zach. Ted, yeah. what do you think? Dan, we've been going for almost an hour. Yeah, I. That's, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm saying. It's it's the mentality thing, and you know he's not. He's an accountant. He's a guy. He doesn't know that much about football. He's not. And his accountant. last two GMs are Ryan Pace, who's. Been more good than bad, and then Phil Emery as well, who signed color to that horrible contract. 
Yeah, and that's and that's the thing with Pace. Uh, I don't even think I got to speak, but very briefly, anyways, it's it you know his mid round to late round picks are exactly why I would keep him. But his problem is his offensive talent. He doesn't hit early rounds, uh, which sucks. But it also comes down to development as well. Um, but I think it starts up at the the higher uh, the higher people, which is Ted Phillips. Um, I, I don't think he has a football mentality like I was saying. I think you need to get somebody. I think you need to get someone young who's more statistical and, and somebody and who more. really, really wants to win. Who's yeah. got it? I, they come in, they're no nonsense. They they want to get things done, and that's not who Ted Phillips is to me. It's not who All he right, is. well, that'll pretty much do it for our very long 2020-2021 uh, season review and a bit of our thoughts about the future. Our off-season content is going to start tomorrow, uh, so be sure to come back, subscribe, and like if you made it this far in the video on YouTube. Uh, also, subscribe, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts if you made it this far. If you want more content from us, we're kicking off our off-season coverage very soon on our website, BearedDown.com, NFL Draft, Free Agency Coverage, also talking about some firings for sure on there as well, uh, as well as recapping our thoughts uh, on the season. So be sure to go check out our website if you have any time. We just revamped the whole site, looking really good on there, and there's a ton of people that work very hard behind the scenes if you'd like to find us on social media we're at bear down on instagram and twitter uh we're definitely going to keep up the content on there give you sneak peeks of what we're posting we have a lot of fun stuff planned for this off season and we're excited because the off season was really big for us in 2020 so hopefully 2021 can serve us well again and finally you can find the links to all of our social media pages down in the description our instagram and twitters are all, all four of us uh, are definitely worth following. We're active on all the platforms. You can see our thoughts on professional sports, on other things, Chicago, uh, and it's definitely worth checking out. Parsha, Jill McClinton, Zach Rimbos, longest video we've recorded in quite some time, uh, but it definitely needed to be done, talking a little bit about the future and the entire season. So any last words before we close this one off? Yeah, it was fun. Um, it was a long video, but enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep it short. It's gotten way too long. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I usually watch all our videos. I'm not going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, any last words? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like you don't even get to be able to speak on everything you want to say. But I feel like know. we could ramble on for like oh, three yeah. hours. About, like, I could talk yeah. about like, two but Either way, man, you know, it's always fun to get our thoughts out there, let, let other people know what we think and ask what they think. So, you know, it's always enjoyable. Yeah, and I, I would like to say for all of us before I close this one off, I said it yesterday at the end of the live stream, we thank you guys for the support throughout the entire season. Uh, while you know it didn't end how any of us wanted to, it was still a, a very eventful season. You guys kept coming back and supporting our content. And you know, after 2020 and how tough it was and how that season ended, it, it's not going to discourage us. We're going to keep posting every day of the week. Uh, and we want to differentiate ourselves and, and keep coming to you guys with the best content on YouTube, on Spotify, and on Apple Podcasts. So be sure to join us because we're going to keep coming back to you. But it's been a pleasure to be your host, guys. Once again, my name is Chris Mulpey. Bears fans, as always, do us a favor. Try and get over this season. Uh, we, there's a lot of hopefully uh, entertaining stuff to come up soon. And as always, stay safe and bear down. We will see you guys back soon. Uh, I'm sure the Uncut Series will make a very good return, and that's pretty much it for us, guys. See you guys. Peace out.